Today's lesson is on photosynthesis. So let's get started by just looking at the general uh, equation first. But before we do that, let me go ahead and just share with you kind of what photosynthesis means. If we were to split the word photosynthesis into two, you have photo and you have synthesis. The photo part has to do with the light, in particular light from the sun. And then synthesis means to manufacture or to make, or it has to do with a process of some sort. So when we put it together, it's a process that has to do with light. Relatively uh, easy to, to, to probably imagine, but the process itself is, is pretty complicated. So let's take a, a look at a working definition. And really to define it, I, I think the, probably the best sentence that can be said is it photosynthesis is a process that converts solar energy into chemical energy. Sounds easy, but the actual process is quite complicated. The two uh, living organisms on the planet that are affected, obviously, by photosynthesis are heterotrophs and autotrophs. Autotrophs are categorized as plants and also some bacteria, but essentially they're living organisms that produce very complex organic compounds from very simple ones. And of course only plants, and like I said before, a few um, bacteria can do that. Heterotrophs, on the other hand, are organisms that really can't fix carbon. And they've got to get their carbon from producers or plants. Now, if we let, take a look at the equation, it too is relatively simplistic, but it has a lot of meaning in terms of life on this planet and, of course, the agricultural industry. Now, obviously, in the agricultural industry, what we try to do is we try to maximize photosynthesis because it increases yields and increased products and those kind of things. So a basic understanding that I think is really important from the perspective of being in an agricultural uh, classroom. If we take a look at our two simple components, and they're very simple compounds, carbon dioxide and water, we consider these reactants. Reactants are those compounds that are needed for a reaction to take place. And carbon dioxide, as well as water, are fairly simplistic and relatively small in comparison to what it produces. But there's some other things that you need to have as well. You need to have UV light in the, energy, in the presence, of course, of sunlight. And, of course, it fires off photons. In addition to the energy source to run this reaction, we also need a place for it. And that place is uh, chloroplasts. And in chloroplasts are chlorophyll. So I'm going to go ahead and write down chloroplasts because that's the place. And then inside the chloroplast is chlorophyll, a pigment that uh, um, has... Uh, uh, components where when the photons hit it, it kind of excites those electrons to actually do some work. And then the product side of things has to do with sugar, C6H1206. This is a fairly complex, large uh, compound that was derived from very simple ones. And of course, oxygen is the waste gas that's given off uh, during the process. So it can be said that the equation is really simplistic, but of course the, the processes aren't. So let's move on to the next part. And this is kind of where it all uh, it kind of happens. If you take a look at um, this particular picture, it's obviously the picture of a leaf, and it has to do with where it all happens. It happens in the leaf. The leaf has all of the, the mechanisms and parts to, to make um, photosynthesis run. It's kind of like the engine. So let's take a look, a little deeper look in the leaf. And if we get a little closer, we can see the, the, the uh, chloroplast packages. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get beneath the epidermis, beneath the cuticle to see really what happens. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we get a little bit deeper, we can see the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts are these round little components right here, all of these green things. And uh, this is a place where photosynthesis takes place. So let's dissect one of these and see what's underneath it. And if we take a look, we have um, what we call a, uh, a chloroplast. That's what this kind of gray thing uh, looks like. So when we uh, are outlining it, 
this this whole thing right here is the chloroplast and there's some things inside of it that are very very important to understand the first piece of machinery is what we call a thylakoid and the thylakoid is the heart where light reactions takes place there are two processes or two phases in photosynthesis the light phase and the the carbon fixing phase or sometimes just the Calvin cycle and the Calvin cycle takes place in that now all the light reactions that means when the photons of light hit the thylakoid they're gonna take water molecules and we're gonna split them into two areas the oxygen is given off and runs right out outside uh, the cell into the atmosphere and then it'll keep an electron or electrons as well as the protons from hydrogen the other thing that it's going to do is it once it produces all of those products what it's going to do next is it's going to deposit them like for instance the ATP as well as the NADP and NADPH they're given off and go into the stroma the stroma is this connective tissue or some people just call it the space it's a thing that surrounds the thylakoids all of this right here is called the stroma that's where the uh, Calvin cycle takes place so let's take a look a, a little bit deeper look into the Calvin cycle and what it produces but remember uh, the electron transport happens in the thylakoids it produces obviously the oxygen and also the uh, it harvests the electrons from the splitting of uh, the water molecule now when we go to um, again the, the leaf and we look in particular on the on the thylakoid and on the membrane of the thylakoid that's what we see right here this piece right here is the is a, a membrane of the thylakoid it's doing all its business here now what happens is these are a series of uh, pigments and and proteins that carry on uh, a, a, what they do is they grab a hold of the electrons they grab a hold of the protons and move them or carry carry them from one point to another they're carrier proteins and here's all of the um, elements and compounds that are moved from place to place we're going to start with water and hydrogen oxygen ADP and of course ATP photons etc so those are going to be an important part of this light phase really where it, where it all starts is with the photons the photons are packages of light that, of course, the, um, the sun will deliver to the photostation 1 and 2. And this is photostation 2. This over here is photostation 1. And uh, these are filled with light-sensitive pigments that when photons hit them, they excite all of the electrons that are in it, and the electrons can be passed from one carrier to the next. But the other thing that happens, the photons will hit the uh, water molecules and split it into hydrogen and those hydrogens are moved to the lumen of this or that space or the stroma and it collects it over here causes a concentration gradient of protons or positive uh, electrons over here, or here or excuse me positive particles over here and then what will happen is um, they'll harvest the electrons and then let all the oxygen um, particles or the oxygen to be released out into the atmosphere. So that's what happens in that, that first phase of it. What happens next is as these electrons are passed from one carrier to another carrier, and then when it gets over to the after um, the photostation one, what it's going to do is it's going to give up its electrons to ADP. And as it gives up those electrons, it's going to make ATP. These particles right here are called ATP they're really crucial into um, hanging on to uh, hanging on to all the energy whereas over here I told you about all the protons that are over here in the lumen they're going to be harvested by the ATP synthase and that particular enzyme is going to take all these protons attach them to NAD and turn them in again to ATP. So what we're harvesting here in the, in the light phase is ATP, NADPH, and then of course what we're kind of moving on is uh, some of the carbon. 
removing the carbon over to the other side as well so uh, glucose can be made. So those are the products of the light phase. Now let's take a look at the Calvin cycle to see what happens to the rest of the phases of photosynthesis. And again, we go take a look in the leaves, and in here you can see how it all works. Now the Calvin cycle is, is happening right in here, right in the stroma, whereas the light phase happened in all the thylakoids. So what happens is the ADP and um, NADPH help run this Calvin cycle. First of all, we talked about carbon dioxide being uh, something that's passed on uh, in the light reactions. It's passed on and joins it with this five carbon structure and Rubisco is a enzyme that puts these two together to cause a six carbon chain which immediately gets split into these two three carbon chains. So this is a three carbon and a three carbon chain and then what happens is ATP joins the mix right here and puts, uh, puts it together. So what happens is this three and this three and then what happens ATP comes along and what it's going to do is it's going to weave together all of these um, uh, carbon chained uh, molecules are being made and this G3P, a three chain or three carbons put together and this G3P really helps out in determining what kind of sugar it needs to be made, whether it be glucose or lactose or some other sugar that needs to be made. That's what is made is the G3P and it needs ATP and it needs carbon dioxide to make it happen. If those things don't occur in the right amounts and um, if they start to uh, dwindle in numbers, then the entire process of photosynthesis slows down and eventually stops if you doesn't have ATP or carbon dioxide. That's why it's really important to keep um, this in mind as we're, as we're studying it because the level of, of efficiency of photosynthesis has to do with the level of CO2 as well as ATP, which is made in the light uh, cycles. So there you have it. It's kind of all put together for you. It comes from a very simple equation, and that equation is... We take CO2, water is added to it in the presence of UV light and chloroplasts, and then what you get in return is sugar plus oxygen. Very simple to write, but kind of hard to explain. I hope this video has helped you, and we'll see you in the lab tomorrow. Thanks.